Meta is having quite the year. It hit a high of $308 or so a share, and it got as low as $155 or $160. He started to get my attention as it fell. Why? Because I like stocks that fall. A great place to start to look for value is stocks that have fallen to 52-week lows. Does that mean it's a guaranteed value? Absolutely not. Your job as an investor is to make sure that you understand the difference between price and value. We want to see a disconnect between people's perception of the company versus the stock price. So that's what we're here to do on this channel. So let's pull up Meta in our stock software. So I'm going to type in Meta here on the main page. Meta platforms. All right, the stock is currently at $163 per share, down 2.75. But as I said, it's a high of 384 and a low of 154. So let's go through the eight pillars real quick on our software. This is an eight pillar thriller. So first two metrics I look at, the first and the last, what are they? The five-year PE ratio we want under 22.5 and the five-year price of free cash flow we want under 18. Oh, sorry, under 22.5 and it's 18. So this is good. So, so far it's saying, hey, these companies are selling for less than what we want to look at. Does it mean to buy? No, it does not. We look at all the other attributes. They have bought back a few shares. Now I will say this. I like the fact they're buying back shares, but they bought back shares in years in which they were very, very expensive. Because think about it. The company's at 160 now, but just nine, 10 months ago, it was at 380. So that means these ratios here, instead of being 18, we're around 36 to 40. And instead of being 17, 35 to 40, that's pretty expensive to be buying back shares. When they're buying back shares at expensive prices, they're investing your money as an investor into an expensive company. Yes, it's their own, but it's no different than investing in another company. So we want to make that, take that into consideration. Look at this, guys. Very little debt. Their five-year average free cash flow is $24 billion, right here on the main page of our software. They can pay off all their long-term liabilities with 0.9, basically 11 months of their free cash flow. That is incredible. They had cash flow growth, they had revenue growth, and they have rent income growth all over the last five years. And they have a high return on invested capital. This means they get a high return on the money that's invested in the business. This is extremely important going forward with a company to make sure that they can get good returns for their investors as cash is coming into the business. Okay. So let's look at a couple aspects of the company because they have slowed down. And what's the reason why they fell from 384 to 160? Well, a big part of it is quantitative. The user growth has slowed. Guys, this does not worry me as much as it worries everybody else. They have three and a half billion worldwide users on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, amongst all their platforms, three and a half billion of the 7.5 or 8 billion people on this planet. Just think about how many people don't even have access to a computer and Facebook is touching so many people. So it's natural that their user growth is going to slow. My thesis on Facebook is, or Meta, is they haven't maximized the revenue per user and they're investing a lot of money in the metaverse, this virtual reality world of which we're supposed to get to live in in the future. Now, whether you buy into it or not, the reason I like it is they're taking $10 billion plus hits every year to their net income investing in this. So if it doesn't work out in five years, yes, they've lost $50 billion, which sucks, but they also have $10 billion extra per year to give back to shareholders. And that's the key there. You have to sit there and say, if this meta platform idea doesn't work, are they still going to be a good investment going forward? So that's what we're here to look at. So some of the things I want to look at some more. This is the income statement over the last 10 years. Look at this growth. $5 billion to $120 billion in revenue. That's incredible. Even last year, they went from 105 to 120. Okay. Net income growth. Let's go to the bottom here. Look at this. $19 billion five years ago, $500 million 10 years ago, and now $33 billion. Look at this, $500 million. They do this now in three or four days. That's incredible. So they're generating big, big profit. Does that mean you go out and buy? No. It's still possible to overpay for a lot of profit. And it's very possible to overpay for growth. Let's go look at the growth numbers of the last five years. So we have our stock analyzer tool. If you're new to this channel, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. My goal is to buy companies for less than the market perceives them to be worth. I use the quantitative aspects to screen out businesses and determine which ones I like most and to invest in them. And part of the quantitative part is I put my assumptions about the future 
of revenue growth, profit margin, and free cash flow margin to tell me what price to pay for the company today, excluding their balance sheet. Is this a surefire, surefire way of investing? Absolutely not. But it's a great starting point because the bigger the discount to my value, the more research I can do to determine if the stock is a good buy or not. Now, the question is, what price do we pay for Facebook slash Meta? That is why we have the Stock Analyzer tool. This has been our most valuable tool in our software because it allows us to make assumptions about the future and bring those assumptions to today to tell us what's price to pay. We don't know the future, so we're putting in, we give the one, five, and 10 year as kind of a guideline, but as time goes on and the stock gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we have to adjust our assumptions. My goal is to be conservative. Now, if you're serious about investing, you're going to wanna watch this part of the video over and over again, several times, because this is exactly how I want you thinking about being conservative about the future. There'll be people out there who look at a 39% revenue growth of the last 10 years and say, okay, I'm going to assume 30% to be conservative. No, I'm going to go way lower. And you're going to see in past videos I've done on Meta, I'm going to use different numbers I do now. I don't use the exact same numbers, but I'm conservative in all of them. That's the key there, if they're around the same numbers. So let's proceed on. So first off, guys, like usual, I usually pick the 10 years of analysis. And again, you can pick anywhere from one to 20. And if you have our software, compare your assumptions to my assumptions. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying you're wrong. However, I would say you're wrong for assuming 30%. You might end up being right, but it'll be a fluke and it's not reasonable. So low, middle, and high revenue growth assumptions. Guys, I'm going to go with six, nine, and 12. Now, six, you might be like, oh my God, six, how is it so low? Well, guys, remember, Apple changed how they're allowing Facebook to use their data. Facebook is going to spend, their, their big growth came in the last 10 years, and they have to sit there and readjust how they grow their revenue. I think I'm being very conservative, but I would not be surprised if it's only 6% a year. That is where I'm standing there. And that's still almost doubling in the next 10 years. Profit margin. Now, for profit margin, look at the 1, 5, and 10-year numbers. We have 28% in the last year, 32 in the last 5, and 31.7 in the last 10. They are spending a lot of money on Meta. Over $10 billion a year, they say they're spending, and that's hitting the profit margin completely. So I'm going to go conservative and call it 26, 29, and 32. I, I'm okay doing the high level where they were previously. But in the meantime, the low and middle, I want to be a little more conservative. Free cash flow margin. I'm actually going to mimic the exact same thing because over long periods of time, free cash flow and profit and, and earnings should be about the same thing. So I'm okay using the exact same numbers here. Now, finally, these, last, these next three metrics, PE and price of free cash flow. Guys, the key here is where do you think the PE and the price of free cash flow should be in 10 years? Not today, 10 years from now. So the larger and larger a company gets, and the less growth potential it has, the lower your PE should be. That's a big reason why on companies that have 30 or 40 PEs that have a lot of growth potential, I'll go put it to 14 and like, people are like, wait, what are you doing? I'm like, guys, it's already, it, if it grows a ton in the next 10 years, it doesn't deserve the same PE in multiples as it does today, okay? Now here, we see PE and price of free cash flow is already being pretty low, 13 and 12. I do believe that the moat of Facebook justifies a higher PE. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to do 13, 15, and 17 for both of these PE and price of free cash flow multiples. Because I do believe that as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they engross more of the world's users, they can still have that moat to justify the market-wide PE. Plus, you want some sort of discount. And finally, for the desired annual return, um, so guys, I could actually understand doing a scale level here. I'm actually doing something I don't do very often. For the low range, I've already been conservative up here. I'm okay doing a lower desired annual return. Because remember, the lower the desired annual return, the higher the price. Because the more you pay for a stock, the less return you get. For the middle, I actually want a 15% return. Because I think a few things have to work out for them in the meta. But there's more risk for that. So that's why I'm putting a higher return level. And the same thing for the high. I'm going to do 17.5% here. So if you compare this video to my past meta videos, I have not done that scaled up version. I actually like this at times when there really is a wide range of where the stock growth could be. So I'm going to hit the analyze button. 
The stock's currently at 162. Once we scroll down below, there's going to be six numbers given. Three for earnings multiple, low, middle, and high. And three for free cash flow multiple, low, middle, and high. If they're all green, that does not mean you go out and buy. It means you verify, you do your research to verify this is actually probable to happen, any one of these. And it's all red, it doesn't mean you go out there and avoid it. If it's pretty close, look at the stock right now. It's down 3% today, 162. Let's say the highest number is 150. Okay, it's not far off. What you can do if you have our software is add it to your watch list at 150 and the phone app, email, and software will notify you when it hits 150. So it allows you to go do more research and enter this community and start talking to people about what they think of Meta. If you don't have our software yet, go to everythingmoney.com. It's less than a cup of coffee per day. It is so easy to use. You get all of the software that you saw here, plus more, plus the community of thousands of people every single day interacting. So we hit the analyze button, scroll down. Oh, Boise, we got all three red, all three green, sorry. 165 low, 260 is a high. Guys, do your research. I'm doing my research. I have puts at much lower prices on Meta. I love it. I feel like the story has been overly dramatic. And I, I encourage you to do your research. Don't just buy because I'm looking at it. That is very irresponsible. But I appreciate your time. If you want to learn more about our eight pillar process, watch this next video about the whole eight pillar process. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your time.